Our most kind and compassionate, loving Father in heaven, we gather before you as an assembly once again on this Sabbath day, O oh Father, that we may be able to worship and honor you, to express to you our deepest gratitude, O oh God, for once again you have blessed us with this life and our strength, the ability, O oh loving Abba, to gather like this, to praise and honor your most holy name. We are the very small remnants in these last days. Praises be to your most holy name. Thank you so much, O oh loving God, for this right and this privilege you have given unto us, that we are able to worship you and glorify your most holy name. That is our only aim and goal in life, O oh Father. For who are we without you, O oh loving God? Our life is nothing but dust, O oh Father. Please, loving God, have mercy upon us. Fill us with your spirit today. Grant us your love and your mercy, O oh Father in heaven, so that we may be able to fully to be able to glorify you, to give praise and honor to your most holy name. O oh loving God, do not be far from us today, O oh Father. As we sojourn in this life, O oh God, you know the many trials and difficulties that we face. Oh, loving Abba, please continue to guide us, to protect us, oh, Father. Bless our hearts and our mind always. To our loving, to your loving hands, we entrust to you our life, so that we may always return back to you, to walk the righteous path in praising and honoring you, oh, God. Our Lord and our Savior, King, 
our true messenger and our true shepherd. O oh Lord Yahushua, we long for your return, O oh Lord. We are your true followers in these last days. There's nothing more in this life than to be able to be like you, O oh Lord. That is our goal also, O oh Lord Yahushua. For as you have faced the many trials and hardships in this life, we too, we know as your followers, we will face the same, the same tests and trials in our life. But, O oh Lord Yahushua, all we long for is to be with you, to be near you, O oh Lord Yahushua. For as you have commanded your children, O oh Lord, for when we are weak, that is when you are strong in us. Please, O oh Lord Yahushua, do not abandon us. Be our strength and our guide, O oh Lord Yahushua, that we may continue to follow you and most of all, continue to walk the right path. O oh God in heaven, please continue to bless the means of livelihood of your servants. Please, O oh God, as we face the trials and hardship financially in this life, may you provide always the opportunity for us that we may continue to sustain the means of living to each and every family standing before you. And most of all, we will continue to worship and honor you, O oh God. Bless the offering that we have, well, that we have set aside May be well be blessed by you, O Father, that will provide the needs of the assembly, O dear God, that we may continue to spread the gospel, continue to spread your laws and your commands to the people of this world. We hope and we pray that you will be in our midst today, O loving Abba. You will grace us with your presence indeed, O loving God. For this we humbly beg and pray only to thy Son, our Lord and Redeemer, Yahusha HaMashiach. Amen. Shabbat Shalom, my beloved brothers and sisters in the faith. Praises be to our loving Abba indeed for gathering us here once again in our worship service to listen and to abide by his laws and his commands. Today, my beloved brethren, our topic is choosing to obey. Now, every aspect in our lives, we've always have chosen to obey, have we not, brethren? Obey those that were put in a higher authority or those entrusted to care for us. When we were young, we obeyed our parents, our teachers. When we became adults, we became those of a higher authority, such as our manager or our boss at work, the law enforcement that implement the laws of the land. We choose to so obey so as not to get into trouble and not have to deal with the consequences and or punishments. So much more important then when it comes to our obedience to our loving Yahuwah God and our Savior King Yahusha, my beloved brethren. Our obedience demonstrates our love for Yahuwah and sets us apart as His true children and as true followers of our King Yahusha HaMashiach. And as true children of God, Obedience to us means we completely surrender to his authority and base our decisions and our actions on his teachings and commandments. Now, brethren, in the Holy Scriptures that we're going to study today, what is the admonishment of our loving Yahuwah Abba when it comes to our obedience and the warning to those who disobey him? 
Let us go to our first verse of the day, chapter, book of Deuteronomy, chapter 11, verse 26 to 28. Behold, I said before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing if you obey the commandments of Yahuwah your God, which I command you today, and the curse if you do not obey the commandments of Yahuwah your God. But turn aside from the way which I command you today to go after God which you have not known. As children of God, in these last days, my beloved brethren, we are given a choice, have we not? And Yahuwah Abba, through his servant Moses, gave the people of Israel the choice to make. He says a blessing and a curse. And today, brethren, that does not change at all. Blessing if we obey the commandments and curse if we do not obey the commandments of Yahuwah. Easy choice, right, my beloved brethren? Easy. But as we all know, throughout the history of the people of God, especially when it comes to the people of Israel in ancient times, they kept the making they kept making the wrong choice in their lives. My beloved brethren, as children of God, in these last days, we are also given that same choice. And the command is simple, and it's this. If you want blessings in our lives, we abide by the laws and commands of our loving Abba. We obey them wholeheartedly. We surrender to them, my beloved brethren. And on the other hand, if we disobey, by all means, it is the curse that we will get received from our loving Abba. May we make the right choice, my beloved brethren, in, this, in our decision of receiving the blessings of God, choosing to obey the commandments and the will of our loving Yahuwah Abba. Now, what is the true meaning of obedience according to the Holy Scriptures? Here, let us continue reading the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 12 to 15. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work in your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling and arguing so that you may become blameless and pure. Children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you, my beloved brethren, we will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the world of life. According to the Apostle Paul, True obedience is our willingness, my beloved brethren, to obey consistently. That is the key word, brethren. Consistently. Not only when we feel like it or we want to, but consistently. Obey all the commandments of Yahuwah God. Even when there is no one telling us to do so. We obey not by pressure or wanting to please anyone here on earth, but to obey willingly only our Father in heaven, in our King and Savior, Yahusha HaMashiach. Brethren, let us not be some of the people of this world or ancient times, the Pharisees who praise and worship in street corners just to be seen and admired by people. They only serve because they have the title right beside their name. Because they have a high office. No, my brother, my beloved brethren, we obey not to be admired by people. Because then our obedience is useless and it's all for show. Our obedience must always lead us into working out our salvation. How? With reverence, my beloved brethren. Remember that word? With reverence and fear without complaining or arguing. 
so that we may become blameless and pure in the sight of our loving God. Brethren, we live now in a warped and crooked generation, do we not? Look around us now, what we see. People doing whatever they want to do. There's chaos, my beloved brethren. Like we just have learned in our Bible studies, Bible in history. When the people of God had no king, they do whatever what is right in their eyes. We see that now, my beloved brethren. But as true children of God, we must always obey the commands of our loving Abba taught to us by our king, shepherd, Yahusha HaMashiach, shining as lights of the world by our obedience, brethren. What else? What else should motivate us as to obey, my beloved brethren? Here in the book of John, chapter 14, the verse is 15. If you, if you love me, you will keep and obey my commandments. What else should motivate us, my beloved brethren, to obey? Our love for our Lord and our King, Yahusha. And nothing else. Why? Because there are those who obey or follow not because of love but for material gain. If that's your reason or anything else other than our love for our king, your obedience will not, will not last, my beloved brethren. I don't think I need to remind you how much Yahusha proved his love to us. The suffering that he went through, my beloved brethren. I don't, I, as I ask you now, this, my beloved brethren, do we also love our King Yahusha? Do you really love our King Yahusha, brethren? If your answer is a definite yes, our King, right now, my beloved brethren, wherever you are at this moment, is telling us, key. Then, and obey my commands, if you really love me. That is the word out of the mouth of our King Yahusha. How else? How else must we prove our obedience to the Lord, my beloved brethren? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. How else must we prove our obedience to the Lord, brethren? By honoring our father and mother here on earth. To the young adults, brethren, I think we also went through this in our last lesson last week. And please pay very close attention to this command of our loving Yahuwah God. It is the first commandment that is followed with a promise from Yahuwah our God. I don't know about you, brethren, but we have seen lots of broken promises, have we not? Friends, even family members, even those that we truly care about. But our loving Father in heaven Never, never breaks his promise, brethren, because of his love, unfailing love and compassion unto each and every one of us. Lots of prominent successful people have written books on how to be successful in life, right, my beloved brethren? What is the key to success? Right? But Yahuwah is telling us, brethren, obey my commandment. And what did he say? so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. That is the promise of God if we choose to obey His command. Not only will we have a blessed life, but a long life to enjoy it, my beloved brethren. That is the blessings. Nothing compared to anything else, brethren. Who else must we then obey? Who else must we obey? 
Romans chapter 13, verse 1 to 2. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist has been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebe rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. Now, who else must we obey according to the scriptures? The governing authorities or the government. We must also be good citizens, my beloved brethren, living in the land we live in. Cities where we reside, brethren, abiding by the rules and regulations set forth by our city officials. Why must we obey the government? There is no authority except that which God has established. So in a kind of way, they are also put there by God for our own good. Remember when the Pharisees tried to trap our king Yahusha by asking him, should we pay taxes to Caesar or to government? What was the answer of our king once again? Give unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Give what to God what belongs to God. Yes. We should choose to abide by the laws governing us in our land as long as they don't compromise our beliefs and values when it comes in obeying our Father in heaven. For in the end, my beloved brethren, in the end, we do everything, everything we do for the honor and glory of our loving Yahuwah Abba, remaining as faithful children of God true followers of our King, Yahusha HaMashiach. That is my lesson, part of the lesson, brethren. Our lesson will now be continued by our brother. Shabbat Shalom, brothers and sisters in the faith. We are truly happy to have you join us for our worship service today. Our topic is about choosing obedience. When it comes to obedience, we understand that first and foremost, we accord complete and absolute obedience to Yahuwah Abba, who created each and every one of us. It's a good thing that we practice and choose obedience, because when you look at what Yahuwah commands his people, for example, when you study the Ten Commandments, what is the purpose of the Ten Commandments? Is it not to preserve the happiness and welfare of his people by establishing a harmonious relationship between the people and God? and also a harmonious relationship between people and within themselves. This is why Yahuwah gives us commands. It's for our own good. So when we choose to obey God, we choose the blessing that God intends for each and every one of us. However, to maintain this kind of harmonious relationship, stability in society, stability in our own homes, Yahuwah God has placed certain human authorities. For example, in our home, who is the human authority God placed to lead us? Our parents, especially the head of the household. And so it's good that children obey the authority of their parents. And when it comes to society per se, in our country or in the place where we reside, we believe, the Apostle Paul says that, Human governments, human governors, although they are human beings, they have been appointed by God to preserve the order and stability of society. It's also good that we submit to their authority, because otherwise we're going to have chaos and anarchy, just like during the days of the judges. However, when it comes to these human authorities God placed, that we should submit to who also, or is there a limit to their authority? Is there a limit to our obedience towards them? Let's read the book of Acts, chapter 5, 27 to 29. The apostles were brought in and made to appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Peter and the other apostles replied, We must obey God rather than human beings. 
They called the apostles in and had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Yahushua and let them go. The apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Yahushua is the Messiah. And so is there a limit to our obedience towards authorities, human authorities, even if, in a way, we can say they have been placed by God? Yes, there are limits to their authority. We should not give them absolute obedience. For example, when human governments or human authorities instruct us to worship idols, what are we going to do? We're not going to say, well, because they have been placed by God as a governor to rule this place, I'm going to worship this idol because I don't want to go to jail. That should not be our mindset. First and foremost, who must we obey? God. And if the governing authorities, what they have us to do is not against the will of God, then we will go ahead and respect and honor the authorities. This is why our King Yahushua says we need to obey, what it, to give what is Caesar's, what is Caesar's. But first and foremost, we need to give to God what is God. So God is supreme. Now, who are examples of those who resisted authority because they were being forced not to obey the command of God. Well, the apostles. Remember what our King Yahushua uh, uh, instructed the apostles? What did Yahushua say to the apostles? He said, go out there and testify and be a witness about me. Testify me. Preach about me. And so what did the apostles do? That's what they did. They preached about our king, Yahushua. However, who got upset? The Sanhedrin, the Jewish authorities. For them, it was against their wishes. And so what did they do to the apostles? They warned them, never again must you preach in the name of Yahushua. But what did Apostle Peter and the others say to the authorities? A principle that we need to adopt in our life. The apostle said, we must obey God rather than men, rather than human beings. And so the apostles, even though they were instructed, never again must you preach in the name of Yahushua, what did they continue to do? The Bible says they preached in the name of Yahushua, and afterwards they were imprisoned and flogged. Eventually they would be released because of the admonition of Gamaliel, but after they got out of the jail cell, you know what they, did? what they did? First thing that they did, they went to the houses, they went to the temple, and what did they do? They continued to preach the word of God. They continued to preach that Yahusha is the Messiah. You see, we need to obey God rather than human beings. So we need to understand we need to respect authority. Parental authority, government authority. However, when it's going to violate the teaching of God, then we say yes to God and no to human beings. How also do the apostles teach the importance of submitting to certain authorities? Let's read the book of Hebrews 13, verse 17. Obey your leaders. Be willing to do what they say. They are responsible for your spiritual welfare. So they are always watching to protect you. Obey them so that their work will give them joy, not grief. It won't help you to make it hard for them. I think for many of us, this passage is very, very familiar, right? Because the apostle tells us that we need to obey our spiritual leaders. Why? because they are responsible for our spiritual welfare. Beloved brethren, it's this true or not? It's absolutely true. You know, in every congregation, there are elders. There are those who lead and pastor the flock that is in front of them. 
And so what is the purpose of these elders? Well, they are leaders in a spiritual sense because they teach and remind us about the word of God. And so if we obey what they have to tell us, what will happen to our spiritual life? It would grow. That's the ideal situation that we have dependable spiritual human leaders. But the question is, do we always have spiritual leaders who teach and act according to the will of God? Unfortunately, no. You know why? Because spiritual leaders, whether we like to admit it or not, they're also human beings. Do they make any mistakes? Yeah. If anyone will claim that they cannot make any mistake, run away. That cannot be a spiritual leader. One of the characteristics of a spiritual leader is they will not bring people to themselves. They point people to the true spiritual leader. Who is that? Yahushua. See, that's the purpose of a spiritual leader, to teach them to go to someone else, just like John the Baptist. He did not say, go to me so that you can go to Yahushua. Now he says, go to Yahushua directly, right? And so we lead people to Yahushua. This is why a spiritual leader understands that his purpose, why he was appointed, is to bring people to Yahuwah through our king, Yahushua. This is why when it comes to spiritual leaders, just like authorities place uh, like human authorities, like parents and governing authorities, they have their limitations. We don't accord them perfect obedience or unquestioned obedience. We never say to our spiritual leader, we will obey you no matter what. Because when that's the case, it's a recipe for disaster. It's going to bring condemnation to the congregation. And so we need to limit our obedience when it comes to spiritual leaders. We need to test what they have to tell us. But how can we know that what the, the human leader or the spiritual leader, what they have to tell us is already against the will of God? Let's turn to the book of Samuel 15, verse 22. Then Samuel said, does... Yahuwah take pleasure in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as he does in obedience. Certainly, obedience is better than sacrifice. Paying attention is better than the fat of rams. What we read about is Samuel, and he's basically telling, he's lecturing Saul because of the mistake that he made. Samuel was the judge. He was also a prophet, and he was the one guiding uh, Saul. Saul, of course, was the first king of Israel. So is Saul an authority? Yeah, he was an authority, right? And he was instructed by God to do something. What was that? Take your people and kill the Amalekites, including all their livestock, the sheep, the oxen, the cattle, even if they're fat cattle, they're supposed to kill them, right? And so that was the instruction from Yahuwah. But a, uh, Saul, when he destroys the Amalekites, what does he decide to do? Yeah, he spared Agag. Not only that, he spared all of the best cattle, all of the best sheep and the best goats. He did not kill them. You know what his reasoning was? We're going to offer it as a sacrifice to who? Yahuwah. And so he instructed his people, spare these fatlings, right? Because we're going to give it as an offering to Yahuwah. And so these people who obeyed the orders of Saul, did they obey the teaching of God? No. You see, what did they fail to do? They did not pay attention. How can we know if what our spiritual leader is telling us to do is according to the will of God or not? We have to pay attention. We have to know 
the word of God. You see, the people who were following King Saul, they were following him blindly. And so they ended up doing what is against the will of God, thinking that what they were doing was for God. Oh, we're going to offer these fatlings to Yahuwah. It must be good. Well, perhaps they did not know the instruction. You see, there's a danger when we do not know the instruction of Yahuwah. But how can I know the instruction of Yahuwah? How can we know, brethren? The Bible. We have the instruction of Yahuwah in our hands. The Bible tells us. And so what must we do so that we can maintain our obedience to Yahuwah? We need to study the Bible. We need to test our spiritual leaders to make sure what we follow is not the will of man, but the will of God. And who is the perfect example of one who was able to do that? Let's read the book of Philippians 2, 6 to 11. Who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. So that at the name of Yahushua, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Yahushua Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. And so who is the best example of one who was able to obey Yahuwah, his beloved son, Yahushua, Amashiach. This is why the Apostle Paul tells us, put the mind of Christ in you. What does that mean? Follow the example of our king, Yahushua. And so how is Yahushua able to completely and absolutely obey the will of Yahuwah? Bible says he em emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. The Greek word actually used there is bond servant. You know what a bond servant is? It's basically a slave. And so what, what Apostle Paul is telling us is Yahushua chose to become a bond servant, to become a slave to Yahuwah. We, who put on the mind of Yahushua, we choose to become the slave of Yahushua. Now, beloved brethren, Nobody wants to be a slave. That word is like, it has a, a bad taste to one's mouth. But the Bible tells us we only have two choices. We can either be slaves to sin or slaves to Yahushua. Because whether we like it or not, we can clamor freedom. I'm free. But we are actually slaves of sin. And so we need to choose that we are bond servants of Yahuwah, bond servants of Yahushua. What does that mean? We surrender our rights to who? Our King Yahushua. This is called obey and never complain. And to whom do we give this type of submission to? Obey and never complain. Not human leaders. But to who? The leader, our King Yahushua. Because if we're going to accord that to a leader here on earth, then we are becoming his slaves. Do you get it? And so how was our king Yahushua the example of being a slave to Yahuwah? Bible says he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death. You see our king Yahushua? He did not just obey. What does the Bible say? He was obedient. See, there's a difference between one who obeys and one who is obedient. You see, we are not defined by what we do. We are defined by what we do again and again and again. And so we need to choose to obey, but we need to choose to obey all of the time. We need to become obedient. To be obedient means that is our mindset. That is our lifestyle. We choose to obey all of the time. When must we choose to obey? What, does, what is included in all of the time? You notice what Apostle Paul says? He, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death. You see, sometimes there are people who are willing to obey, but only to a certain point. 
if they're going to obey, but because of their obedience, they're going to be ostracized or persecuted or imprisoned. What do they do? They stop obeying. There are those who, when they obey, it's going to have to, it's going to cause me to sacrifice a lot of things. I'm going to lose a lot. So I'm not going to obey anymore. You see, Yahushua is different. He obeyed to the point of what? Death. Even if it meant going to the cross, he obeyed Yahuwah. He said to him, not my will, but thy will be done. This is the example we need to follow when it comes to obedience. And what, how does our King Yahushua value our obedience? Let's read the final passage of our studies today. Revelation 1, 3, and also 22, verse 12. Blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy aloud. And blessed are those who hear and obey the things written in it. Because the time is near. Look, I am coming soon. And my reward is with me. To pay each one according to what he has done. How much value does our King Yahusha give to our obedience? Our King Yahusha tells us when he returns, he says, I'm going to pay each one according to what he has done, according to our obedience. What does that mean? It means Yahusha remembers our obedience. He remembers our sacrifices. He remembers all that we do for the sake of the Father and for the sake of his Son. This is why when you read the message of our King Yahusha, in Revelation chapter 2 and Revelation chapter 3, there's one thing that we're going to realize. What is that? Yahusha is always watching us. Yahusha is always looking at our thoughts and our heart. And he knows what kind of obedience and why we obey him. There's one aspect of obedience that was mentioned in the book of Revelation. What is that? You see, when it comes to obedience, it's not just the act of obedience that matters, but also why we obeyed in the first place. And what is it that Yahusha is seeking for? What is it that the Father is seeking for? We obey. We endure. Because we love him. Because we love our Father, Yahuwah. Is this why we obey the Father? Is this why we obey our King Yahusha? Because whenever we are given the opportunity to obey, it's also an opportunity to express how much we love the Father and how much we love His beloved Son. So choose to obey. When it seems hard to obey, say to yourself, Father, what I need to do is difficult for me because it contains so much sacrifice. But I will choose to do it. I will do it anyways because I want to show to you and prove to you. Father, I love you and I will obey your word. I will obey your voice. I will obey your teaching. Beloved brethren, if that is our mindset, if there's love in our hearts that moves us to obey no matter what, and we are able to glorify the Father and His beloved Son. Choose to obey. But choose to obey, not to please self. Choose to obey to express how much we love the Father and His beloved Son. Let us stand and we shall pray together. Almighty and gracious Father, Yahuwah Abba, thank you so much for you have given us this clear teaching about choosing obedience. We understand, Father, it's good for us to obey you. For your commands serve a purpose. It maintains loving relationships that we can take care of one another. And that we can remain close in fellowship with you. Thank you for your commands. Thank you for your instruction. Help us to adhere, to cling to every word that you give us. 
because they are our life. And by them, we find light and guidance. Father, bless your people, especially during these dark times. We will look to you, Father. Yahuwah, Abba, show mercy upon each and every one of us. We will obey you no matter what, even if it means sacrifice and persecution. We will obey you, O oh Father, because we want to express to you how much we love you. Our King Yahushua, you are the perfect example of obedience. We want to have your mind be our mind and your heart be our heart. After all, we were baptized into your body. Oh, King Yahusha, we ask you and invite you. Dwell in our hearts. Dwell in our midst. That we might be properly guided in everything that we do. Father, bless the works of the assembly. Bless everyone who is worshiping today. We ask that you show grace once again. By healing us of our sicknesses and strengthening our faith. Bless our families, Father. Teach us all to love one another, but most of all, to love you expressed by our obedience. We believe, Father, you have listened to our prayers in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahusha HaMashiach. Amen. Abba's unfailing love and tender mercies overshadow us. The grace and power of Yahusha HaMashiach strengthen us, and the constant companionship of the Ruach Kadash be with all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Uh, beloved brothers and sisters, uh, just a few announcements. First of all, we will continue with our children's ministry today at 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Also tonight, we will have our BQA Tagalog, Paano Maliligtas Ang Tao, we're going to be addressing some questions given to us by one of our viewers. And also let us be reminded, I think in, in about two weeks, we're going to be, uh, we're going to observe the spring feasts. These are Yahuwah's Moedim. And it begins with Passover. And Passover, we of course commemorate the day, we commemorate Yahusha's suffering and death on the cross. So it's going to be our Holy Supper. Let us prepare our bread and also the juice that we're going to be drinking for the Holy Supper. If you're going to participate in your own home or in your own venue, uh, you will connect with us for the sermon, the prayer, so that we can all partake of it together. But each venue, you're assigned to provide for the needs of that venue. Um, but if you can join us in person, even better. We're going to hold it in Fremont, as usual. And it will be on a Sabbath, March 23, 3 p.m., Pacific Standard Time. Also, we're going to have our convocations, March 24, March 30, 4 p.m. PST. When we say convocation, of course, we mean a worship gathering or a worship service. March 31st, we conclude the Spring Feast with the First Fruits Convocation, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Also, uh, we would like to request that those who are giving their offering through Zelle and PayPal, Let's begin to use our new email address, not the old one. The old email address is uh, offerings at assemblyofyahusha.org. Um, instead of using that email, let's use this new email instead, offerings at aoy.today. And so um, you can go to our new website at aoy.today so that you can get more information. Also, uh, beloved brethren, beginning tomorrow, um, we will be, we, I guess we're going to begin the uh, spring forward protocol, which means we're going to move our clocks one hour ahead. So once it strikes midnight tonight, right, or one o'clock, anyways, before you sleep tonight, adjust your clocks forward because beginning March the 10th, we're going to basically lose an hour. 
right? Because we're going to jump forward. So if you sleep at 2 a.m., adjust your clocks and put it to 3 a.m., right? So you lose an hour when you wake up. Uh, but we'll gain that hour back <laughs> in the future. And right? so that's so that we can keep in, so that we can remain in sync with the different time zones. Please uh, remember this so that you will not be late when we have our Bible studies and our worship service gatherings. That is all. May Yahuwah Abba and Yahushua HaMashiach bless all of us.